Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone. It's been a long time since I've seen all of you and I'm so sorry for you know the delay but because I was busy with work and also from family matters and mainly because I also was supporting any every other uh, community services that you know can help our ummah in other ways. I was busy in those areas so alhamdulillah finally now I've managed to find some time and I know the Ramadan series has been going on for two years already and we only have this once every year. So Alhamdulillah, this is now the third series of all the Ramadan series and episode one. Then just to let you know for this Ramadan, there's only four episodes. So I'm going to do this only once a week and either Friday night or Saturday night, inshallah. I hope next week we'll get uh, Sister, what's her name again? Uh, Annabelle. You know Annabelle, uh, she's the, the the radio DJ, right? The musician, right? So maybe also her husband Sheikh Haikal can come online, inshallah. So we hope and cross our fingers they can come online, inshallah, to to share their story. But tonight, tonight is a very special one. We have uh, very fortunate to have two brothers who are Singaporeans, and they've come to embrace Islam. They started off from very different uh, religion background, you know. So you have brother Harris, Harris, <laughs> he came from Roman Catholicism. And then after that, left and to become a Buddhist. And after from mm. Buddhism, he finally came to Islam. Okay, and then we have also Brother Hanafi, who started off uh, in a Buddhist family, eventually led, led him to Islam. So it's amazing, right? I'm wondering, like, how did they come to embrace Islam? And most of the time, you know, we have this general idea that um, it's only for the Malays here in Singapore, right? So most people think, oh, it's only a Malay religion or... It's a religion that you don't see a lot of Chinese uh, coming into. But inshallah, you know, you'll get to see more. And uh, hopefully their stories will shed some light into uh, the religion of Islam itself. But before we begin, I just want to share with you about uh, some of the charity causes that I'm supporting at the moment right now. Okay, I'm adding to the stream. I uh, can see the two brothers here. <laughs> okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, very handsome beard brothers. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so I don't want to... Uh, get distracted, ah. Huh? Okay, okay. So this one is a few years ago. You know, brother Rizwan was already in Cambodia doing this uh, charity for the orphans and villages in Cambodia. Um, if you remember the last video that we did for him, which is only uh, last year, let me present this video in one second. Okay, here we go. Coming up on the stream. Yeah. So brother Rizwan is currently now at Cambodia with all his logistics and he's just hoping that he can help him to find some of the things he One of them is solar lamp where he can light up the road for them at home to go to school and to go to tea and have a safe journey to go to school. The total now each cost 25 Singapore dollars. Uh, we can donate any of our money. And also, now, what is special about this year is we are also giving out the Al Quran with a popular translation, which is the language of the So, we can read the Quran in the language also during this time. So, if you wish to support, you do not hesitate to drop us in the video now. I'll send you, I'll show you this, his details. Okay, so you see they are breaking fast. Okay, so your donation for these Cambodian orphans and villages, um, you will go to food packs, one kg of korban meat to each family, iftar meals for orphanages and villages to break fast. There will be solar lamps also to light up their roads to school, home and the masjids. Uh, you know those those villages are there like near the forest, so it's very hard to see. So your solar lamps will help them to see at night also. So you can read the books, their Quran at night. There also be water wells built in, in Cambodia for them. And also the distribution of Al-Quran in Arabic with Khmer translation. So Alhamdulillah, they can read those Quran during the month of Ramadan. So do drop brother reason to pay now if you're interested. Any amount is accepted. 91200885, so 886. That's his uh, pay now number. You also can do a bank transfer. Just remember to add RN2023 Shah Hero. That's the reference so that he knows it's coming from this live stream as well. 
<coughs> excuse me okay next of course uh, if you've seen the post on the uh, wakaf of this chinese translation of the quran so far uh, let me give you an update on this okay so this is uh, my tabulation of all the masjids that we have given out the Qurans to. Okay, the number three means three Qurans to that masjid. Five means five Qurans to the masjid. Okay, so you can see we've covered quite a few grounds already from the north to the south, to the east and west. Um, there's a total of 67 mosques mm -hmm. in uh, Singapore. So mm -hmm. 24 have already received our, our Qurans. And uh, in total, 84 Qurans have already gone out. So we are still going to fill up all the spaces here you see in the white boxes to to the masjids over time so give me some time as you know i spend some weekends to do the delivery for you um so yeah if you like to walk up the quran to the masjid do find me on the https slash slash link tree tr dot ee uh, slash for dawas chat if you are dot chat you can also find that link on my instagram bio click on the link and it will just direct you there Yep, so um, let me add to the stream in case you have not seen this is the Chinese Quran. Uh, the Quran is the we got the 99 names that you can go the front cover. And I mean, like, you can see the word Quran. The Quran is a beautiful motif of Chinese culture being. This is the Al Fatiha. It's on the right side of the page. The Arabic word Al Fatiha. And on the left, huh? it's in Chinese. With the Arabic and the Tafsir. So this is all given to me by Mekmar. Mekmar is the Chinese Muslim community in Indonesia. We have also Rescue Foundation who has been a part in this. Uh, all the information is available on the link that I give you. So uh, you can also work up this. And of course, I'm also and very specific to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life and organizing and this is also in the Guinness World Record for the first Arabic uh, book you know so it's quite a quite an extensive book so inshallah if you like to get one for yourself or for someone do check the link okay so now we come back to the story okay alhamdulillah okay brother let's let's go okay before we start we just find out a bit of your backgrounds okay like how was it like being uh in a buddhist family maybe i ask brother hanafi first uh your a bit of a family background like you know as as a young boy brought in a buddhist family what is it like and how come it did not resonate <laughs> with you, like Buddhism? Yeah. Okay, so, thank you. Assalamualaikum. Thanks everybody for having me. Um, my parents are Buddhist. Um, so I mean by default, um, um, they were they were they were bring me to temp to the temple itself. But um, it's not a must for me to follow them. Yeah. So, I mean, after a while, most of the time, if I were to follow them, I think we need to seek some help. For example, during the exam period. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time, yeah. If not, I mean, we will not really go to the temple itself for, for me as a young boy. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, I mean, when I was, I mean, I, from my mother's side, my mom's side of the family, they are um, more like free thinkers or it's a bit of Buddhist come Taoist mix. La. They are, mm -hmm. the way they practice. It's not, I don't think they would call themselves Buddhist or they would specifically call themselves Taoist. They would just say, this is what was taught to us when our ancestors, you know, were here and they teach us to pray. To, to, to you know using the joystick or the the thing they just follow the same thing up because they believe that is uh what is done before and it was right la. so uh, i guess 
is the same for you right in your environment and, and that brother yeah yep. alhamdulillah thanks for sharing that brother now we let's go to brother haris brother haris <laughs> interesting so were you both your families roman catholics or you were you know baptized and baby or how how did it happen uh baptized uh as a baby and then uh i had a godmother uh, from the church as well and uh why i was brought up as a roman catholic is because my mom is a roman catholic uh however my dad is a free thinker so naturally i would just follow my mom uh for mass every uh saturdays and then uh eventually catechism classes <clears throat> uh growing up yeah Mm, alhamdulillah you know what's strange both you and uh brother hanafi is also about a combination of of my background because my father is catholic and uh his family side mostly are catholics and my mom is a free thinker so uh mm. her side of the family is also like buddhist taoist mix so i guess i got a bit taste of both sides <laughs> but mostly um roman mm. catholic for me as well i was brought up and uh had catechism classes like you um and then there's confirmation classes right and there's the holy eucharist where you take the first time at primary not primary right nine years old you take your first eucharist and then 16 years old you get the confirmation something around those lines and then after that yeah when you confirm you can choose a new name also if you want right or you can add a new name right <laughs> yeah i had a very long name as well so <laughs> well anyway yeah, that, that was a bit of the my background. Uh, so I got a big mix of both. Okay, now, interestingly, so how did, okay, brother Hanafi, now, how did, um, from Buddhism, right, you come to Islam? Like, how did Islam come into your whole framework after that? Um, actually, I met a uh, Muslim girl. Mm-hmm. Mm. So after a while, she actually encouraged me to to attend the to attend course, and um, quite thankful that we actually stay in the east side, which is near to Darul Akram. So for nearly four years, we at we attended course every week at Darul Akram, and wow. inshallah um uh we actually embraced islam uh after four years four years yep. so yep. so during your journey um what do you see in islam that is so attractive like you know was it i mean i believe it's not because of just marriage right that you came to the religion yep. you could easily just say to her be a buddhist or something i don't know she can just change or so right uh, but for you uh what made sense to you in islam Actually, the five pillars of the uh, Islam itself is actually it equally um enlightened me. Yeah, and um when I attended course like the Fikhi course and even a uh, story of the Prophet itself. Yeah, those are the course that I do enjoy uh, going over, uh, and also because of the Husta itself. Um, he because of the the lesson itself is connected in, in English. It's easy for us um, English speaking um, student to so called to have a better understanding. Self, mm-hmm. yep. So, so um, maybe you can share a bit about like Buddhism. Is there a God in Buddhism and Islam itself? Right, you we believe in one God. So was that the part which connected with you eventually like um made sense to you um brother hanafi yeah, sorry i i can't hear you oh you can't hear me okay sorry i repeat <laughs> sorry. So, uh, <laughs> no problem no problem so for example right um when you studied buddhism what i learned from most of my friends who studied buddhism they also mentioned about um, the way of life which uh, Guantanamo Buddha taught him, right? Uh, Saudi Tara Guantanamo, right? That's his name, right? He's, um, yeah. So when he was teaching Buddhism, it was a way of life, how to live a life, right? Mm-hmm. <coughs> but he did not directly call himself a god 
or he actually worshiped with God, right? Yep. So there wasn't like like a God inside this picture. Mm, yeah, for me, I don't really study in deep itself for 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 the Buddhism itself. For me, it's most of the time it's like I'll just follow my parents. It's more like uh what the parents do. As a kid, I will just follow. Mm. Mm. So so yeah. um so so why do you stop following your parents? <laughs> uh maybe it's because I find that um I will only go to the temple if I need to ask for a favor. Mm. Most of the time it's like for example um exam period. So my mom will say, oh, it's time to go to the temple. You want to get a good result, we need to go to the temple. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So at home we don't really we don't really pray. Yeah. So offer of joy state is like uh, whoever feel like want to offer a joy state itself. So you will just offer itself uh, I mean uh, in the morning and in the evening time. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So for me also once in a blue moon, then I will offer. If not, uh, I will not do it because I will just take for granted that I uh, don't need to do since that uh, mom will do it or dad will do it. Yeah. Can Can I ask? Okay, is it like how do you identify if God exists in like as a Buddhist lah? Is it when He answer your prayer, then you say, "Ah, uh, yeah," then God heard my prayer or like. If God didn't answer your prayer, then it's like I need to try harder. Or, or is it this kind of thinking? Like that's why you offer more joystick, or that's why you do more things. Similar. I believe it's similar. It's like um because you you uh like uh in the past it's more like okay, I I wish to have good result. Yeah. So most of the time we were taught to say that okay, uh please give me a good result. So after, if my result is good, I will go back to the temple to make some offering. Yeah, kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 but mm. if but if I don't get a good result, yeah, then you say that oh, because you don't study hard enough. Okay, so back to yeah. relying on yourself to do hard lah, to work hard yeah. also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's the same in Islam, right? Uh, Allah says that. He will only change the condition of a people when they they themselves choose to work hard and change themselves, right? So you have yes, to start yes. off with yourself first, wanting yes, to change, right? Yes. Then God will come in after you pray and add more support to to that, make it happen, right? And again, it doesn't mean that He didn't answer your prayer, means is uh is a bad thing because God sometimes give by taking away, and takes away by giving. Does that make sense, like? But sometimes he he knows what's best for us because of divine wisdom. He knows what is like your future plan and everything. He can see what's before you and what's ahead of you, right? So when uh, he doesn't give you something in life, it's because he can foresee something bad that also might happen to you after you have it, and it might take you further away from coming closer to him, which is something that you all humans. That's our purpose of life: is actually to get a stronger relationship with God, um, and for some sometimes when he gives you something it's actually not so good because it's actually a punishment itself so for some people they suddenly got really rich all of a sudden right um we might think in our eyes as a society wow he's very successful he he manages to you know earn billions of dollars now a billionaire multi-billionaire right but then sometimes the billionaire will say um there's still something missing in my life um there's a void um i cannot find peace at home or I always fear that somebody is going to take my money or is this girl going to marry me because of my money and you know there's a lot of extra worries that suddenly come in and then they have lesser peace in their mind or you know of course there are some who show that they have peace they have wow, they have all the luxury in the world they got the car they're gonna drive they can travel everywhere they want right but ultimately they how say okay I have all this ready what more can I have there's still something else they are seeking for and that's the big question in life right we all come come to this point so why are we here in this world why 
why do we strive for all these riches and then that's the end after we're gonna death is still gonna come for us at, at the appointed time right i think that is the biggest question for all of us like what the chasing for what are you chasing all this for right uh so so uh, brother hanafi so the islam give you the answer and how the you know the five pillars of islam you mentioned become something so uh strong in in your belief you know uh, compared to just going to the mosque you can also go to the mosque and pray and ask god to answer your exam or give you all the things you want right but there's definitely something else right in in islam that made you feel like this is the truth <coughs> definitely the first pillar of the islam for the dissertation of shahada is yeah i mean uh at that point of time when i recite my first my my shahada, my shahada is yeah i actually i mean the the emotion is there yeah it's mm -hmm. like okay uh you're going in to islam that you know that you know that uh is the uh right away for for me itself and also because i know that i have my family support Russia. and yeah also uh my my future uh parent-in-law yeah they are i mean the my immediate family and my my uh my wife my parent-in-law uh they are there to wait to witness it yeah yeah which is yeah is thankful for me itself um for the five daily prayer itself that's that's what i think this is very different from buddhism itself for the five daily prayer this is how i remember allah itself where we pray uh it's not just that uh we pray for the sake of praying we pray at the time that that uh he command us to pray yeah and um that's why i find that i mean for islam itself um it 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 bring me closer um every single time when um i pray yep then definitely we talk about um zakat all this yeah to give out to the to the poor etc i mean for fasting itself this is something that i never believe that i'm able to achieve it <laughs> yeah if yeah if i'm not if i'm not uh a uh, revert itself because i find that oh i can do without food but i cannot do without drink for more than half hour i mean this is the faith itself that i mean uh to keep us going during the month of Ramadan itself, yeah, all these things. And definitely, I mean, last year, uh, we went for Umrah uh, with brother Harris and family, uh, Halim, Trevor. And definitely, I hope that uh, we are able to go for uh, Hajj in the uh, near future. Inshallah, yeah. 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 So how was uh, Umrah like for you? First time, right? You were doing it? Oh, yes. First time. It, it really mm. touches my heart that I see that, I mean, people <laughs> which, I mean, different necessity. I mean, we are doing the same thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, to, to um, um, mm. at the Tawah area itself. Yeah, we see like all sort of, I mean, also people but at the same time you will realize that everyone is actually doing the same thing we the 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 faith is so strong that i mean everyone is like just following what 
uh, is commanded for us to 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 do. Yep. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Just to add on to your point about the um <coughs> the five pillars of Islam, you covered something about fasting, right? When this is the month of Ramadan. So today is your how many year fasting? It's my like twelve twelve years. Twelve years. Okay. Yep. For me, nine years already, lah, brother. Haris, is your how yes. many years fasting? Uh, this is my fifth year into Islam, so it'll be my fourth. Fourth year fasting, alhamdulillah. So, you know, like most of us, you know, we never, last time before becoming Muslim, we never fast before, right? So yeah. this is also my biggest fear at that time. Like, can I really do one year, one month fasting? You know, like, <laughs> so now, now what is your, your, after, after you tried so many years, right? What, what can you say to a person who, you know, like want to do fasting? Can they do it? They will ask this question. Is it easy? To me, I think after so many years, I find it's quite easy for me. Yeah. So I always tell them that, I mean, um, I don't start from young. I start when I was um, early 30s, my first uh, fasting. So if I can do it, I think you guys can do. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the first year when I fast, um, what my wife encouraged me was um you go slow first half half a day you maybe three to four pm so mm-hmm. after that then you realize that come on it's just three to four pm just three to four more hours to go then you 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 you, you get the full you get the full full fasting of of the day yeah so after that then okay yeah uh, yeah yeah do you, do you feel any difference after you fast? Definitely. Uh, of course, lose weight. Like, about, lose weight like. <laughs> my body weight definitely. I, I will I will lose at least 5 kg. Oh. Yeah, at least 5 kg. Yeah. Mm. Mm. MashaAllah. Nice to hear that. What about brother Haris? Uh, just share a bit about fasting. Yes. La. How was it like for you when you... You know, five years already, right? Yeah. So, mm. any advice to give people who are, like curious about fasting? <laughs> well, uh, for me, before I start my fast, I uh, always set the uh, intention, and then I ask Allah Azza wa Jalla for for help. Uh, mm-hmm. and uh, that I think as I progress, uh, along the way, uh, I I feel that uh, as for me, uh, I can deal with not eating but the thirst is quite a challenge uh-huh. so yeah usually um after zoho onwards then i will i will really feel it from then on so how do you yeah. overcome that thirst the need for uh, real, real power real <laughs> so power always ask Allah Azajal for for help yeah right. to to complete the the fast <laughs> just uh keep yourself busy if you bother and just uh yeah, I mean everyone have their capability, but work mm-hmm. with uh, how you can, uh, you know, manage it yeah, throughout. Hmm. Mashallah. Thanks for sharing that, brother. I mean, for <laughs> myself, right? You know, for myself, fasting is, is um, how to say ah, uh, uh, like you said, you keep yourself busy with the the prayer already. Then it's a lot about mm. willpower. But I think the main thing is the intention of why you fast. Like yes. if you ask me on a normal day, like no, not to do for Ramadan, just go and fast lah. Like okay, okay, uh, maybe you can try one day, two day, but mm-hmm. when it comes to third, fourth day, you say why am I fasting? You know, like that. There's no, there's no foundation to why you <laughs> want to do it, and therefore you will sort of like give up halfway on. So um, uh, but when you set the intention, the intention is right. You yes. do it for God, do it for Ramadan. You want to get closer to God. Then Sunday, you can do it lah. So. Mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah, thanks for sharing that fasting. Alhamdulillah, um, it's also said that it's a means to increase our taqwa. Our yeah. taqwa during this period. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah, correct. So they say in the Quran, it's mentioned that we have prescribed this for you, uh, mankind, as your father said that you want to do as well, and it's the means of getting closer to God. And that's taqwa itself, right? God consciousness, getting closer to God. Yes. So, uh, alhamdulillah. 
Um, mm. And also, you know, okay, some people will say, well, Islam a lot of restriction. Eh? You need to say your shahada. That's one. And second, you need to pray five times a day. People find that five times a day is a chore for some. Right? They say, oh, I do work halfway. I must go and pray already. Right? This is the prayer mm. time. There's a window period for each of the five prayers. And um, my answer to that is, right, for me, um, you see, even when you have no restriction to pray, you can pray anytime, basically. Do you really go and pray? <laughs> you end up getting distracted with things, right, along the way. Maybe some people are very disciplined. Uh, they will say, okay, I don't know. I make myself pray. Uh, I'll combine all the five at one time <laughs> and then do at this time, you know. Uh, but then it's not easy to spread it out across your day and to specifically do it at intervals um, because it's some sort of like a like a break from certain things you're doing, right? Let's say you do work halfway, you're very stressed or something, and then now it's time to talk to God, so calm down, you know? Or then you or you get so busy hanging out with your friend, you forget really that you have some time to spend, need some time to spend with God. Then the prayer kind of reminds you, okay, time to spend time with God. So the prayer is really done like a structure for your whole whole day life la. and and across your whole lifetime until you die la. so without structure how can we perform in the most excellent way you know like how the olympics athletes right they need a structure to their routine to become <laughs> an olympic athlete that excel in their, yes. their race consistent. consistency must be there right then also uh, athletes they have to go on special diets just to achieve that certain body physique so that they can, you know, either swim faster or something. So if you look at an athlete, we are all athletes in the sense that we are achieving the end goal is to enter heaven. And that is our prize at the end of the day. So all of us are racing through this life and God is saying, okay, this is structure. You want to reach there? Pray at certain intervals so you can remember me. I know you are not ungrateful. And then you do your zakat so you can, you know, bless others also with with the things i share with you you share with others right and then you you do your five daily prayers you do your zakat you do your fasting so you can experience how is it like to be uh, closer to me to god you know and to be closer to those of your brothers who are less fortunate than you so all these are all very good like brother hanafi mentioned the five pillars of islam and that's what i felt that islam was uh, although it's a restriction but there's a it's a form of guidance in itself right we ask for guidance in life but we don't follow any restrictions so where's the guidance <laughs> i mean if you go drive down the road and there's no traffic light to tell you stop right you just keep going right then you might go off a cliff maybe so now the restriction is the traffic light say red stop then you go then pray lah you know then you can go on afterwards so so sometimes we are funny as human beings right just want to add to this whole topic we, we tend to think that all oh, restrictions is bad for us but actually some restrictions are good, which is meant to guide us. Alhamdulillah. Thanks for sharing that, brother. Okay, now come to brother Harris. Okay, I'm curious about your your, your background, right? Roman Catholic, go to yes. prayer every Sunday, Saturday, and go for catechism. So how did that change to Buddhism after that? Okay, because um, uh, in my 20s, I think I stopped going to the church. Right, and then uh, from then on, I just uh, went on my own, I would say. And then um, in a search, uh, later on, uh, why I got attracted by Buddhism is because, uh, you know, whenever you see the monks, right, they're always like in a state of, uh, you know, Zen and uh, having contentment, I would say. So that was what uh, attracted me to Buddhism because they always look like they are at peace, you know, throughout their day and like whatever they do. Um, so that was how I got into Buddhism, I would say. Mm. Um, yeah, for a while. But I was still in a search. Like I did not know where I was going after that or so. And I did not look into Islam because, uh, as you know, growing up, there's a lot of uh, misconception and, you know, what the Western media uh, publish in particular or say so about the religion. <clears throat> so to me, growing up, uh, I thought that that would be the last religion I ever looked into or embraced, you know, 
and uh, alhamdulillah Allah Azza wa Jal uh, guide me uh, to the straight path alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. so so um okay so you from catholicism you suddenly mm-hmm. found that it doesn't resonate with you and buddhism what was more attractive was how the zen look of the monk and the peace right yeah, yeah we're kind of experiencing and you wanted mm-hmm. to just go into that mode of i would say like a hermit crap lah suddenly just go into isolation and just between you and you have more peace more peace right you were searching for yeah. peace lah. yes okay yes. then then how did islam gave you that extra peace that buddhism did not give you like Buddhism should have given you peace also because I'm saying mm-hmm. that that's what the monks would be doing and they're thinking, right? So right. how how did Islam come? <laughs> okay, so uh, how it happened was that uh, uh, I went to Canada for a holiday uh, about six years ago and then um, I went to see the nature. It uh, was very breathtaking, <laughs> the mountains and everything. And uh, you know, as for everything, there's a creator, right? Who, who creates it? Uh, although I did not look into it much, I admire the beauty of the creation uh, that Allah Zawajal has made and beautified. Uh, and then after which, on my way back from Canada, I just had a strong urge to change my ways uh, overall. And um. Just, I mean, Koda Allah, uh, I catch up with a Muslim brother whom uh, also just started really practicing Islam. So after I shared with him what I felt and, uh, you know, like this urge to change, he, he just smiled and we were catching up during supper. So he just kept quiet. You know, uh, after we were done eating, he said, uh, if you don't mind, let me just uh, share with you a video on YouTube. I do not know if it's a merciful servant or digital ummah, one of those few channels. Uh, uh, Allahu Allah. Uh, it it uh, was around 20 something minutes long and it uh, spoke about Islam and the Quran. <clears throat> so that was very attracting because I'm, I'm quite open minded. So when I watch it, I just uh, listen and see what it has to say about Islam. Uh, so he just kept quiet and, you know, look at me, uh, watch the video with him. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I was done. Then after which, uh, he just sent me off, sent me back. And when I got home, I rewatched the same video to try and really comprehend exactly what he's saying throughout the entire clip. And then when, as soon as I was done with that, then Allah uh, gave me a sign, uh, subhanAllah. And you know, whenever he he gives you a sign, he's the only one who can you know, make anything happen at the, that specific time. And you know, to me, uh, I felt that that was a sign. So from then on, I, I slowly watch more videos uh, about Islam, try to understand and really comprehend the religion. So, uh, leading up to that, I was convinced enough already uh, about, by what uh, the Quran says. And um, there's a verse in the Quran which says that, uh, because you mentioned prayer earlier, right? <laughs> it says that uh, Allah says that I did not create a jinn and mankind except to worship me. And then uh, that's why I'm always reminded uh, of my prayer whenever I see like uh, it's being delayed already, it's time to pray, and then that verse comes to my head. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. back to uh, uh, back to when I was convinced enough already, I I called Darul Akram to arrange an uh, appointment to take my shahada. However, I was told that the next available slot is only two weeks later. So mm-hmm. what I did, because I, I was afraid that I might die before that, I took my own shahada uh, in my room. Uh, I just I just went to look and take the shahada by myself and then. Uh, Wait for the appointment, yeah. And then do a second time. <laughs> yes, the official one. If uh, another Muslim brother accompanied me, subhanAllah. Subhanallah. Beautiful, beautiful story. How you, the sign of uh, Allah gave you is after you watch it yourself, you you really you realize that you know you is all oh, your own free. You are choosing to learn more about Islam, right? 
and uh, it became something which resonated mm-hmm. with you just by reading the words. You understand? How how did you feel? You know, after taking your shahada, like uh, the moment you take yourself, right? What was your feeling like? Uh, I felt like this is what I've been searching all for my whole life. Hey, there's there's this one kind of, one peculiar feeling which which uh, you feel you can't describe it, but you know how it feels <laughs> like uh and and a complete piece of, alhamdulillah alhamdulillah wow so alhamdulillah. beautiful sorry what about uh, <laughs> uh sorry you saying I cannot describe it, the feeling can't describe it yeah i know it's hard to describe it unless you you guys take it like <laughs> you know <laughs> it's not very hard okay maybe sh- you know, what is in the shahada for some of you here who don't know what is in the shahada it's just a declaration of your faith right what you believe yes. in Actually, it's very simple. It's just in English. In, in English, it's just there's no God worthy of worship except Allah. And mm. the last messenger is Prophet Muhammad, who he sent, right? So the moment you the moment you believe these two things, mm. the words that was just spoken, yes. you're already a Muslim. Yes. You no, know, you're already a Muslim. So it's not about the five pillars, you know. Some people think uh five pillars, yes, it's important, but it's not like you need to do all the five straight away, then you're a Muslim. You know, you just have to believe in these two lines that there's no God worthy of worship and Muhammad is the messenger of God. That's it. Then once you believe that yeah, truly Prophet Muhammad was who he sent, the final one to give you the revelation, and believe that Allah is the, the God, the creator of the universe. That's it. You're already Muslim. If you have this in your heart already, um you can call yourself a Muslim really. Yeah, you just need to just verbalize it. I believe in that. And then you're Muslim. The other five pillars is over time people progress. In fact, when the Sahaba, the companion of Rasulullah, the Prophet Muhammad, mm-hmm. they took a while to become fully practicing all five pillars. Or so mm-hmm. I think over the span of over 10 years, you know, more than that, just to become a full fledged following uh, Muslim, you know. So in this day and age, you know, sometimes we see our brothers and sisters who embrace Islam. Oh, faster, you need to do your five prayers properly. You need to. All this, you know, yeah, they need time, lah. You know, not everybody progress the same way in the race, you know. So you must be patient, lah. So alhamdulillah, <laughs> nice sharing with for, about your story about that. Brother Hanafi, yourself, when you took the shahada, how did you feel at that moment? And can you describe the moment when you take your shahada? It's, it's like a, that's like a, it's the way which I feel very light. Oh, sudden, yeah, yeah. Just feel very light, very peaceful. Mm. And as, as as I mentioned, I mean, and I feel very happy like that. Um, at the moment, um, uh, my immediate family, uh, my wife, um, her parent, and also one of her uncle, which is my witness, was there to 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 witness it. Mashallah. Yeah, I guess like it feels like suddenly a burden off your shoulder or something like. Do yeah, you feel, feel very, light. very light, right? Like okay, do you feel like worried that how society will see you? I don't know. At one point in time, like, most people are afraid. Like oh, if I become Muslim, people will think I'm becoming a Malay. <laughs> I don't know, or become a terrorist. You know, some people say that. You know, so how did you overcome those challenges yourself? Like the fear of society giving you that kind of labels, which you. Are uh, not right. Yeah. To me, I don't really care what others uh, look at me. To me, it's more of um, what I look at myself, which is good enough. I mean, definitely, if you talk about, um, for example, when I took the train with my with my wife, sometimes you will see that some elderly will look at us. They don't just look, they will just stare at us. Their eyes will like strictly focus on us all the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is how big to me it's like okay, if you want to see me, you can just see me. To me, I have uh passed by that stage that uh it it, it will not bother me anymore. <laughs> yeah. Mm, mashallah. Mm. 
So yeah. okay, maybe maybe share us. Did you have any misconception of Islam before you came to Islam? What were they? If you have, yeah, I think um, you'll find that uh, Islam is very strict. A lot of things that uh, we cannot do. Mm. Uh, no feeder, and I mean Islam is more for uh, Malay. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. usually that's the same uh, for most of us. The same yes, case. Right? Yeah, because uh, when we were young, I mean, most of us, I mean, we were not, we were not like venture into the mosque itself. Yeah, but people were there was hey, you go church, church is good. Because you church, go church, especially Christmas, you get present. But for Islam, uh, for Majid itself, we don't really hear this kind of things. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, when we grow up, slowly, slowly, we have more Muslim friends. Yeah. Then we know that, okay, um, okay, more, last time I don't even know that uh, Muslim, there is a so-called uh, Friday prayers. Oh. I just thought that, okay, it's something like a temple. Uh, that's the way you want to go and pray, you just go in and pray any point of time, just like uh, what I used to do. Yeah, so after that, they say, oh no, that's Friday prayer. They say, oh, no wonder every uh, Friday afternoon at certain timing, I'll say that, wow, there's a lot of people. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, thanks for saying that, brother. What about brother Haris? Do you have any yes. misconception of Islam before? Was this during the time you are Catholic or was it when you were Buddhist? Or the same? You had uh, the same Catholic. misconception. When I was young, I mentioned earlier that the uh, Western media had a lot of uh, misinterpretation and, uh, you know, about the religion. So, of course, uh, growing up when we were young, I think uh, we just have an inclination to listen to whatever the media tells us and lean towards that. However, when uh, we are older, we are able to think more wisely and uh, question. So, uh yeah, that was uh, that was how I uh, got to know more also along the way. And then uh, looking back, I realized that there were like Allah Azza wa Jal gave signs uh, as I was growing up, mm. you know, to show me a bit about Islam along uh, along the way. Yeah, uh, if I may share one story <clears throat> during primary school, uh, you know we are into computer games uh, back then, right? Yes. And I had a classmate who uh, has two computers. So <laughs> because I did not have one, I will uh, go to his house very frequently to uh, join him and play like a game uh, together. So um, I remember during that time, I was going quite often that uh, most parents would find like me to be a nuisance. You know, <laughs> you know like, uh, and then uh, however, his mom did not stop me from going to the house. Instead, what uh, a very beautiful thing that uh, his mom did, that now that I look at it, right, it's part of the sunnah, uh, is that uh, she will always offer me food, the same exact food that she offered to her son. Uh, when I was present, she would give me another portion of it. So, you know, back then I did not think much about it. But right now, after I embrace Islam, I look at it and I was like, subhanAllah, you know, uh, she accepted me despite, you know, uh, me always coming to the house and perhaps bothering uh, the family also. But mm. yet she still accept and, you know, uh, give me that uh, and you call it, honor the guests, I would say. You know, in, in Islam, we are told that we should honor our guests. SubhanAllah, and that was uh, really beautiful. I, I just make dua that uh, all her prayers uh, whatever she asked for, you know, is being answered and may she be granted the highest of uh, Jannah for, for what she has done. I mean, I mean, beautiful. Wow, nice story. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like, it's, you know, a little kind deed, they say, goes a long way. Yes. Sometimes you don't know the people that yeah. Allah introduced into your life, the right. action you put forward, right? What kind of ripple effect will happen and how they come to Islam, right? For me, uh, actually... I have some Malay friends, you know, when we play soccer when we were younger and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I thought about Islam at the time, it was more like, oh, my Malay friends bring me go and play soccer. Oh, we go eat mirobos. Oh, we go eat. 
Misoto, you know, wasn't really talking about religion. Ah. <coughs> then, in fact, I was more evangelical. I went there to tell them about Christianity, but they just, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> they also didn't do it. <laughs> was the other way around, I asking them, hey, come to my church, like, come, you know, watch. You know, there's a lot of things you can do, activities and stuff. But then, uh, I guess they, 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 they want to cross that boundary, and then they also mm-hmm. realize that uh, maybe one day I'll become Muslim. I think they, they, were, they were thinking that way. Yeah, alhamdulillah, um, they were very kind and nice to me also. And see, it, it goes a long way. Like, nobody knows where where a certain thing you do, uh, at which point of time people will realize that, oh, that is the mm-hmm. that is the nice thing you did, right? So, inshallah, only God knows what happens at, at the end of the road. Mashallah. So, okay, brothers, what about any challenges you face after embracing Islam? Did you share with them? Uh, maybe we'll start with brother Hanafi. Um, do you face any challenges? <coughs> Definitely. I mean, I'm still learning my craft. Mm, yeah, but I, uh, I think slowly, slowly, you it, 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 it will get better because I actually, um, um, actually, I, 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 I have the Quran itself. It's by one of the magic. So it's a it's a zoom. It's a it's a uh, telegram kind of uh, uh, app itself. So we learn at our, our own pace, which is quite is which is quite good. Mm-hmm. So inshallah, in I hope that I mean uh, in the near future, I'm able to decide the Quran itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fully. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Here, see, this is a, this is the one of the miracles of the Quran. Okay, I just like to share with people here, <laughs> the miracles of the one of the miracles of the Quran. You can be any race, right? And the Quranic Arabic is something you can easily pick up. Even though you are Chinese, you're Indian, you are from Europe or from anywhere in the world, if you have the willpower, even the Fatiha, you sure can pick up Fatiha. You, I mean, honestly, let's do one line each. See, I mean, like, just listen to us say that in Arabic, we're all Chinese here, right? Let's try the Fatiha. Okay, I say one line, you say one line, and we finish Fatiha. See, see how how easy it is in Arabic. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, brother. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Maliki yaumidin. Iya kana tuwa iya kana stain. Ih dinos sirat al mustaqim. Sirat al ladina an amta lahim. Right, you are not him. Amen. So, you see, we are all three Chinese here, and then the Afatiha is fully in Arabic, right? We say our prayers in Arabic, and, and yet we understand the, um, the whole Arabic for the Fatiha itself. Also. So, Alhamdulillah. So, you see, the thing is, every one of us. Uh, uh, different race, different country, different nationality, right? Uh, yeah, we all, when we come to reciting and reading the Quran, Alhamdulillah, the Quran makes it easy for us. Allah makes it easy for us to uh, recite and the Quran. And it's mentioned that that's how the Quran is preserved. It's not just by the books that you see, the but it's actually in the memory of, memories of men. Because in the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the uh, Quran, after 23 years of being revealed to him, right, it was memorized basically and passed down from generation to generation. So it was an oral tradition of how the Quran was preserved in the minds of men. Um, so the beautiful thing is now they're making it in the book, so it's easier. After his death, they make it to a book, right? And to, easier to share Islam. But if you were to take away all the Quran, the physical one, I mean, in, in the world, it will come back in two or three days very quickly, just from memory. Each country in this world, there's one person at least who memorized the Quran from cover to cover. And you know why we why do you say the Quran is only one version? Very simple, right? If I change any sentence here, you will know that I changed Fatiha. And everyone will correct me and say, No, that's not Fatiha. You know, that's not the line. So, for example, for those who you know sing ABC, the song A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? This is in your head already. The moment I take an alphabet, I switch the alphabet to the front or the back, you will know that I changed the alphabet sequence, right? So that's how the Quran works. It is like a memory 
stick, you know, that is in your head. Anybody change the tune or change the words, you just know that it's altered. So therefore, the Quran has preserved. Allah has said that He will preserve the last, the final testament out of the four that we believe in as well. Yeah. So that was the only testament in the Quran. Alhamdulillah. So, mashallah. So now, um, brother Haris, any challenges yes. that you face? Definitely. Uh, firstly, the family. Uh, as every uh, revert has a uh, uh, face. However, uh, <clears throat> along the way, I the more I learn about the religion and uh, try to emulate uh, our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and uh, whatever way possible within my means to show the beauty of Islam to my family, as that was the only way that I can do so uh, without speech just by actions you know as they say actions uh, speak uh, louder than words right so real actions and then slowly they start to open up and then you know i might share a thing or two about islam along the way <clears throat> and you know you'll be very surprised that my mom right uh although she's not a muslim yet she is already uh consuming uh cedia honey uh because of the beneficial properties uh uh, about honey mentioned in the Quran. Uh, it's a sunnah food as well. She's eating dates to go along with her oats for breakfast. Uh, and she's also doing cupping, part of the sunnah. <laughs> so these are uh, some things that I, I introduced to her that are uh, very little knowledge that I have to which may benefit her. And uh, in fact, there are a lot of my non-Muslims uh, non-Muslim friends whom I also try to do cupping on and share with them about cupping and you know they get to know a bit of, uh, of the sunnah and the beneficial uh, you know properties that it has on the body and health yeah I mean that. even fasting yes. so there's a lot of things that our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu <laughs> himself has taught us um, for example when you drink uh, you eat, sit down, don't stand mm -hmm. up and drink, and sit up, stand up and eat. And now, today, scientists realize that when you sit down mm -hmm. and drink, there's more nutrients going up to your brain compared to standing up and drink. These things is mm -hmm. only today they found out, right? But that was already advised by the Prophet ﷺ what you should do. Uh, even the, the Quranic revelation of the bodies of the sea, one salt and one fresh, in between mm -hmm. them, there's a barrier, and Allah do not let them mix. So, you know, today you do an experiment, you take a glass full of salt water and a glass full of fresh water, you pour it together into a, a bowl, they will just mix, right? There won't be a barrier between them to prevent salt from mixing with fresh. Yeah. So Allah says that there are oceans in the world, there are seas in the world and rivers in the world where he has placed this barrier to prevent salt and fresh water to mix. And at that time, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was in the desert. He has not sailed... He's not sailed into the ocean. He's not done uh, exploration on all this. But he came up with the revelation from God, right? And God says that there's such a thing. So, uh, alhamdulillah, today they realize only that there's such a thing, right? Um, not only that, right? There's also the how, how they describe the embryo stages, how the baby was formed. This time, At the time, there was no microscope for Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, And then he already described the stages of how embryo leaked. Uh, stages are for, for the baby to form. So, mm -hmm. mashallah, how, how can that be a man-made thing when God has really revealed this 1400 years ago to the Prophet mm -hmm. Muhammad? Yeah. So, that's for, for some of us here, you know. For me, at the time I was thinking, well, this is this a man-made religion? You know, maybe people are just out there to control our lives and give us restrictions. But when you read the Quran and you open up your heart and willingly, you know, try to understand it with an open mind, then you realize that it's not a human who can think and write all these things. Furthermore, our beloved Prophet himself, Sallallahu was an illiterate, right? So he could not read or write, but he's, he's reciting such beautiful Arabic, you can call it poetry, but it's not poetry, it's a recital. And then comes to the mankind and everybody, even the most eloquent person in Arabia at the time would say, this language he's saying is way more eloquent than whatever poetry I can write. Yeah. So, alhamdulillah. That was, that was the, one of the many miracles of the Quran. Okay, so, 
we're coming to the end of the stream uh for all the viewers out there if you have questions do drop them in the comment section and if you would like to watch this video again it's always going to be on the shah hero youtube channel you can go and view it over and over again share with your family and friends now the last thing i want to ask you guys is how any advice you have for people uh who are interested to know about islam or people who just embrace islam or people who just why should i you know find out about the meaning of life and all that so can you give them like one piece of advice? Why is this so important to them to go and look at Islam? Maybe start with Brother Hadafi. Yeah. The best is there's a lot of um, free course like Darul Akram, Simply Islam. I think those are those are uh, institutions that I mean for for revert or for people that. Want to embrace Islam should go and attend to find out more about Islam itself. Yeah. Then um, to have to have more um, revert friends, so that if they are in doubt or they need help, there's a way someone that they can they can uh, look up to, or even some uh, who start which which which, which is good. Mashallah. Thanks for the advice, brother. And uh, brother Haris, wait, there's actually yes. Juwita Kadir who has a question. Juwita, can you please type your question here so I can ask the the uh, panelists? But maybe brother Haris first. What is your advice then to, to the question I asked earlier? Oh, my advice to... Okay. <clears throat> I would say um, have, an, have an open mind and... Uh, just uh, try to learn more about Islam uh, and uh, the beauty of it, uh, after which you will truly be amazed by, uh, by Islam, you know, everything there is to learn about it. Uh, it may do so by getting a copy of the Quran or, you know, just uh, asking any of your Muslim uh, brother or sisters uh, more about the religion, uh, yeah, uh, it's really interesting and uh, just have an open mind to listen and hear what they have to say about the religion and and that's all I have to have to say. Mashallah. Thanks for sharing that, brother. Okay, so uh, we have an audience here, Juwita Khair, who, Kadir, who asked, what suddenly makes you choose Islam? I think he was asking Brother Hanafi, yeah. What, like, what was the sign you saw? She still wasn't like very clear. What was it like? You know, make you love Islam. Um, I mean, after four years it at Darakram, with all the lesson itself, I feel that okay. Um, I open my heart. I I open my heart to the religion itself. And uh, that's where I, I, I thought to myself that okay, um, if this is the region that I, I want to I, I want to follow, then um, then I will so call I will I will em, uh, embrace it. Yep. So I think yeah, it took me around four years to attend calls as if uh, at Dal Dal itself. <laughs> so I, I think to help help brother Hanafi here with you know what he's saying basically if correct me if I'm wrong but it, he was at a point of time in his life he was also searching for a purpose and meaning to life itself right um, he also saw the beauty of Islam through all the courses and lessons that he took and that somehow spoke to him in a way where he was actually answered all his questions about you no know, God, why is he here and stuff. And then that was a sign that he says that, okay, if this is what I believe in really, then why not embrace it, right? So yep. that's how he came to Islam. So everybody has different stages in their point of life, okay? And mm -hmm. some people might be, doesn't mean you must be like in a very desperate stage, like, oh, no money, you're poor, or suddenly the whole world don't want you, then suddenly, oh, Islam is not Islam. No, not everybody have this uh, situation, right? Different circumstances in life happen to everyone. Um, but having said that, 
the purpose of life is a question that all of us should ask ourselves. And no matter what stage of life you're in, what circumstances you're in, what status you are in, where you are in society, whichever power status you are in, the purpose of life is so important because you know everyone is going to die. I mean, it's as taboo as the word death is. It's there. It will come for us. Um, yes. We just don't know when. And this day and age, you know, I have friends who are even like 30 over years old, who suddenly young chap can just go away, like go home to Allah. So we don't know when, what? the moment you sleep, you know, you can wake up tomorrow. You also don't know. <laughs> right. So are, are we ready for the answer to, I mean, like if you say, oh, you know, like some people argue, there's no God, lah, just die, then disappear. <laughs> you know, some people say, just die and disappear. Okay. So let's take, for example, a person who say, I die and I disappear. There's no need for God to be in my life. I just live this, this world. It's my life. Right? And versus somebody who believes in God, right? The person who, let's say both men die at the same time. Okay. And let's say one believe in God, one don't believe in God. The person who die believing in God, when they say that there's no God, let's say there's no God, okay lah, he's safe lah, there's, he believe in God but there's no God lah. He won't go to hell, he won't kena punish, he won't, nothing else because he believe in God lah, but there's no God, right? So he's safe lah. And the person who don't believe in God but when realize there's a God at the end of your tunnel, then God will say, why you don't believe in God? <laughs> I mean, the who is in the safer, safer road? The one who believe in God and die and saw God, or the one who who didn't believe in God and die and saw God. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Using this analogy itself, the safest route was also to believe in God, right? Yes. So, having said that, so we also start to contemplate who created my hands, who created my eyes, why my eyes this big or small, why am I Chinese, why not white, why am I born in a rich family or poor family, why, you know, there's so many questions we have in life and a lot of things we cannot choose, we cannot choose where we are born, we cannot choose the race we are born with, we cannot choose boy or girl when we are born, we are just given, uh, this is your sex, right? So there's a lot of things we can't choose also in, in life, right? Uh, so, but why? Why is it here? Why are we here? Why, why do we need to die? Why can't we just live here forever and just be successful here forever, right? So there has to be a reason to all this. And if we stop asking those questions, stop thinking critically in life, then we might be too late when the real time for us to think about it is really too late. Sometimes people, when they really want to repent or come back to God, they have really lost uh, their senses, right? Their, their nerve systems have gone. So they cannot even think properly at that point in time. Would that be too late for some of us? So hopefully, uh, my advice to everyone out there who, I, whether you're interested in that Islam or not, the question of the meaning of life, why you're here, the purpose is so important. Because after you live life on repeat, even if you have high life, you every time drink alcohol, you know, champagne, go to the sea, <laughs> stick boat, everything, travel the world, you will get bored lah, eventually. The, the world will have its limitations and then you will ask yourself, oh, now I'm too old to climb the mountain. I'm too old to do this and that. Why am I so? Why am I getting old? <laughs> I mean, like, why can't I stay young for a life? No? So people will ask this kind of question. So do take your time uh, for everyone of your viewers out here to contemplate about the meaning of life. I again thank our two brothers here for spending their time to share their story to you know to be brave enough to even come up here on live stream for all of us to to see um so alhamdulillah thank you again brother for doing this to also our brothers and sisters here uh, who are watching and who, who will watch this later on maybe uh ramadan mubarak to all of you today is really the fifth fifth taraweh right really done i think it's the fifth time really so uh we have a few more days to go to the end of ramadan keep going inshallah uh, we see you all again in the next live stream. The next one, inshallah, I hope to get Sister. Um, uh, what's her name? Abba. What's her name? The English word doesn't come to my head. Sheikh Heikel and our sister Annabelle. Yeah, inshallah, I hope to have them on the on the stream next Saturday or Friday night. I'll ask them again when they're free. So feel free to leave your comments, uh, brother and sisters. Um, thank you again for sharing. Uh, Assalamualaikum 
warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good night everyone. Assalamualaikum.